Hello everybody, this is Conquering History Games, and welcome back to another Kaiserreich guide. Today is going to be the guide to the reworked United States of America that was introduced in 0 0.8. Uh, I'm doing this on patch 0.8.2, as you can see in that top left corner, and this was chosen by vote by my patrons. I hope that um, I'm coming through okay. I'm feeling a little bit stuffy right now, so I, I hope I don't sound too nasally or anything like that. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. We are going to be showing off the United States of America, one of the most popular countries, I think, for people to play in uh, in Kaiserreich because of the Civil War and also a lot of the stuff that you can go uh, and do afterwards. It's certainly much more interesting than the current vanilla United States of America because we're right now, I think we're all just waiting around for, man, the guns to come out. Uh, now, before I get too deep into this guide, though, I want to talk about some things that I am not going to be talking about in this video. If you are watching this because you want to see how to avoid the Second American Civil War, I've already made a video dedicated to that. I'll try to remember to link it in the description, but it should already be in my Kaiserite Guides playlist, so you can go check that out there and how the whole Floyd Olson thing works. I am also not going to be talking about all of the possible presidents that you could have as the United States of America because there's dozens of them. So first off, that's way too much. But if you are interested in that sort of thing, Every single one of my videos should have a link that uh, takes you to my Discord. And if you go to my Discord and go through the channels, there should be one called the Kaiserreich American President Project, in which uh, which is meant to be a database of all of the possible presidents of the United, not just the United States, but also the American Union state, the Pacific states, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so just go in there, and you can control F any particular name that you're looking for. You also can control F. Um, like uh, the, the ideology, so if you do control F, market liberals, for example, you can scroll through and it's gonna show you all the different um, possible market liberals that you can elect as the different branches of the United States. So those are the things I'm not gonna be talking about here. I'm also not gonna go into how to avoid the, or how to win the second American Civil War specifically, because I've done like six Kaiserite campaigns and I've shown how to win as everybody. So go check out those if you wanna see it. Just basically get good. All right, now, <clears throat> with all that intro done, let's talk about the United States and what it looks like before anything starts. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the United States of America as it's been reworked in Kaiserreich, maybe you're coming from vanilla, uh, well, the first thing you're going to notice is it's 1936, and there's no Roosevelt. There's instead Herbert Hoover. He is in charge of a fractured nation, only sneaking in despite having 18% popularity because in the 1932 election, the House of Representatives helped get him in. Uh, you are still suffering from the Great Depression, though, which uh, began in 1925, which is lowering your production efficiency cap, construction speed, and factory output by 15% each, as well as creating 40% consumer good factories. That's before you even consider the uh, civilian economy, which means that, whoops, which means that 75% of your factories, even though you have hundreds of them, are being eaten up by consumer goods, so that's no good. You've also got a political crisis going on, which is uh, particularly bad because uh, you have a lot of, uh, well, as it says right here, others are beginning to look to MacArthur and the army as a way to solve both the depression and radicalization. Popular desperation has allowed the far left Socialist Party of America and the far right America First Party to gain strength in recent years. This is going to lower your daily political power gain by 0 0.05, but the real problem here is that your weekly war support and weekly stability is dropping by 1%. So you, this is something that you're going to want to get rid of as quickly as possible. And then, of course, there's the legation city dividends that uh, are, uh, you know, from over here in China. 5% factory output, not a whole lot, but I suppose it is something. Now, moving on... Uh, you don't have a lot of decisions available here. You could do the legislate freedoms or rally public support, but there's probably not going to be much of that going on because you don't have very much political power coming in, especially once you actually take a focus. So, for example, if I took U.S. Air Force, <coughs> pardon me, that's what's going to happen there. Now, speaking of, if we go to the focus trees, you can see it's it's pretty big, like most guys are right trees. A lot of it is not available to you. So, for example, victory in the Civil War, obviously you can't take that until the Civil War is over. The fair deal can only be taken if you have avoided the Civil War. Same thing with democracy prevailing, so this is also locked off to you. You cannot do the Defend America because this is not opened up until you've determined who your leader is going to be, either by avoiding the Civil War or by starting the Civil War, but this is essentially your, your, uh, your land doctrine tree, more or less. 
Uh, you do have access, though, to your Air Force and your Navy, which you can work on. There's also the Monroe Doctrine, which is probably going to be the last... Well, it will be. It will be the last thing that you unlock, because not only do you have either need to have avoided the Civil War or um, the Civil War is over, you need more than 60% war support, which as we will see, can be rather difficult to get to sometimes. So uh, once the Civil War is over, oftentimes as the United States, barring some certain circumstances, you're gonna kind of be in a little bit of an intermission because you have to reconstruct the country. That's one of the biggest things they've done in this uh, update is they've changed how that works. And I think I think some of the, the concepts they've introduced are just fantastic. So, uh, continuing to move on here, you do start with four research slots, which is nice. You've got basic infantry equipment one, as well as motorized equipment and marines. Uh, in support equipment, you've got recon and uh, uh, recon and engineering already researched. Whoops. Okay. Heavy tank one, light tank one are both already researched. You don't have anything in you no know, anti-air or no anti-tank, though you can get anti-air kind of quickly. You can choose from any of your four land doctrines because none of them have been pre-researched. Also remember if you're coming from vanilla that the first one is really short. It, it only takes half as long as the second. Uh, you've got a decent, quite a decent amount of uh, naval stuff that has been researched here, and you can have a very powerful navy as the United States, as we will see. Uh, you've already got close air support, naval bombers, and strategic bombers available to you, as well as uh, the carrier versions of both the naval fighters and uh, naval bombers and the close air support. Um, and yep, that's it. Okay. So before we move on, I wanted to talk a little bit more though about uh, some of the tech here. So your your air force tree that you've got available to you, as we will see, you can actually finish this whole thing before the civil war was to break out. First thing just gives you army experience, that's no big deal. Over here, more air bases and a little bit more air experience here. Women can also become military pilots. The really good one here though is pilot training, which is gonna give you a double research bonus for your air doctrine. This then leads into either battlefield support or air supremacy, the two things that you can choose from. Uh, air supremacy meaning strategic destruction. Battlefield support then goes further down into tactical or strategic bombers, while air supremacy, interestingly enough, goes into fighter tech. You'd think that these two things would be flipped around just sort of like that that's what first comes to mind you then can come down here to air defense court no matter which direction you take and this is going to give you the first anti-air technology so you probably don't want to research it yourself if you're going down this tree anyway since this is going to open it up for you and then you get a 50 percent research on the next one um radar technology you get a couple of those i don't know who the hell uses radar uh Airborne technology too, because you got to get the 101 and the 82nd Airborne involved, and then finally you can get American Jets, giving you some rocketry and jet technology bonus, as well as a teeny bit more air experience, so adding up to 50 for the entire tree. Now over here in the Navy, <clears throat> the Navy is particularly interesting because the first, the first focus is always the same, although, oh shoot, we're already working on the Air Force right now. But then you could choose between if you're going to do the fleet and being, trade interdiction, or base st strike doctrine, which is basically, you want battleships, do you want submarines and screeners, or uh, carrier fighters? What do you want to focus on? Then which one, What these five down here are then, uh, which ones you do next is determined by which of these three you took. Now, no matter which of the three that you pick, you're going to then get have to finish up the battle cruiser development, which is going to fix up your air, armored cruisers, and then light cruiser development models. Now, uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about this because I already did a video about it, but the naval tree is definitely different in uh, Kaiserreich now because this is a world where uh, the dreadnought race never really ended, and so there's much more of a focus on that, so you have different... Yeah, it's, it's just things are a little bit different. For example, you actually have two types of carriers that you could research. Now, moving back over here. Uh, then the third one of these naval focuses that will open up is determined by which of the naval doctrine plans you're wanting to focus on. So battleship development is off of Great White Fleet. Coast Guard is off of America's Trade. And the naval aviation is part of the fleet carrier plan. So it's the only one that doesn't actually improve a ship. <clears throat> it's for fa uh, um, it's for researching. <coughs> Gosh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm a little stuffy, like I said. <clears throat> then um, this is so this could be used for like your carrier fighters or something like that. But then once those are done, uh, the other two are going to be permanently locked off to you. 
You then can come down here, get some more dockyards, work on your submarines, get the infamous Liberty ships, which lowers your trade convoy production costs and increases your escort efficiency. You got maritime industry down here, which is a really good one if you want to be a Navy heavy power <clears throat> because it's going to lower your production costs on all your cruisers, destroyers, submarines, and trade convoys. And remember, the trade convoys stack. You also get faster dockyard construction speed and output. Same thing with your naval base, so it's good for if you're an island hopping nation, if you're gonna go to war with Japan, for example. You've got new admirals, which is going to give you your naval doctrine, which is going to be the first one you get since you're way up here. And then another naval doctrine with expanding the waves before you finally get another one here for America rules the waves. Although you're not going to be able to get this until you've completed this entire bottom uh, half of the tree. Your Marine Corps will also get a, an improvement. And then you can choose here between if you want to have faster amphibious invasion speeds or if you want to actually expand the Marine Corps by increasing the multiplier. And then finally you have your Marines down here. So since you start with the Marines, uh, in theory, there's no reason why you should ever not have a research bonus as you make your way through here unless you wanted to apply them down here for the special forces areas. All right, so that covers the Air Force and the Navy. That's the stuff that can happen pre-Civil War. Now we're going to start going into the save files. Actually, wait, there's, one, there's a couple things I forgot. Okay, so trade. This is actually really important to understand as the United States. You have an enormous amount of resources you have so much oil of course right now even though you're extracting over 1100 of it you're only getting about 200 and change but you have got tons and tons of oil you do now they actually i was gonna say you do not need refineries but maybe you do if you want to be self-sustaining because the only thing you don't have is rubber and chromium and depending on how you wanted to play the game, you can get that taken care of relatively quick. So, for example, if you wanted to invade Cuba, uh, boom, there's your chromium. Uh, rubber gets to be a little bit harder to come by. But even though you're suffering from the Great Depression and you're going to get hit with Black Monday and a lot of other things, by the time the war is over, you should not be short on anything, not even steel, uh, which you need a ton of unless you're sticking onto free trade. But if you just go down to export focus or maybe a worst case scenario to limited exports, you're gonna have everything but rubber and chromium that you're ever going to need. And like I said, there's there's an easy way to get more chromium just right now. I'm trying to, right down here in Cuba. You know, for rubber, again, rubber though gets a little trickier, like right? maybe Brazil, but Brazil's a little tougher, a little bit of a tougher nut to crack than Cuba is. Okay, uh, construction, uh, I didn't get into the details here, but you do have 173 uh, civilian factories, so there you have it, the exact number. Uh, military factories, you've only got 12. Most of your military-focused stuff is naval dockyards, which you have 38 of. So you know that can, again, lead to you having a pretty sizable navy. In fact, here at the start, you've got a couple of hundred uh, navy uh vessels here of all types you know you've got destroyers and and all sorts of things you got destroyers you've got heavier carriers dreadnoughts fast battleships definitely one of the most powerful navies in the world at the start uh so that's your primary advantage at the beginning there's definitely no reason that anybody should ever be naval invading you as the united states uh you know unless they're got access to canada in which case they're just going to walk over you know and then uh, finally, you have your Air Force, which, you know, you do have a few hundred medium bombers and fighters. Actually, you're in the thousands. Uh, a couple of them are stationed on your carriers. So it's a pretty decently sized uh, Air Force that you have at the start as well. It's just your, your uh, actual army that is kind of weak because you've only got the five divisions here. The big red one, the Indian head, the Sioux. Remember, the third division is called the Sioux, not the Rock of the Marne, because the United States didn't participate in World War I in this one. And your Panama Canal Garrison, which is a, sort of your elite division that is uh, only an eight width. Okay, <clears throat> now we're just going to fast forward to the 1936 election if you did not do the coalition under Floyd Olson. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is triggering the Civil War. But I just wanted to go over a couple of things to show how they work. First off, we're here in September of 1936. Let's go with Alf Landon. We'll go with Alf Landon uh, winning uh, with the Republicans. Now, just a quick peek over here to the research. As you can see, you know, there's a couple of things I've been able to research in this time. Uh, and whatever you research is going to carry over to your um and by the way this is not optimal research what i just showed you i was just 
showing that there is a few things you can do. But whatever you do research is going to carry over to the breakoff states, so you want to keep that in mind. As you can see, it's already November, and in this case, I was focusing hard on the Air Force, and we're already done with the American jets. Now, uh, things are going to get kind of quiet after you have the election. Uh, of course, you'll get a couple of events where, you know, Jack Reed, yeah, Jack Reed's going to protest the election results. Uh, so is the American First Party. They're going to get mad. There's going to be riots. There's going to be striking and all sorts of stuff. Uh, but for right now, we could just go ahead once more. And I wanted to show you a particular event that's going to happen after Inauguration Day in January. Uh, because I don't want there to be people misunderstanding and thinking that this could uh, possibly lead to a way to avoid the Civil War if you didn't do the coalition. That's wrong. So if you meet with Long and Reed, you've got a couple of options here. You can choose to not meet with them or you can arrange the conference. But that conference is never really going to go anywhere because you're going to have riots, I, I believe, in St. Louis. That uh, it's going to give you some options that no matter what you do will eventually lead to the Civil War. So yeah, you see you have it there the Great St. Louis Riot. So maybe you just want to grab yourself that political power while you can. Now, uh, let's jump forward once more, just a little bit, to late May. Now, the Civil War could, I suppose, in theory, start later than this if you wanted to be a little bit gamey with the decisions. Uh, for example, you know, when something pops up here, such as Long declares the American Union State, but I'm talking about the earlier ones as well. Uh, you can come over here to events and decisions, and it's going to give you a countdown for how long these stay up. So if you wanted to stretch it out, you could have the Second Civil War start later, but you might as well just get it over with. The reason I bring this up, though, is because if you're not, even if you're not doing the gaminess like that, you can get quite a few focuses done. So as you can see, I completely finished my Air Force tree. I'm already working on the Navy stuff. Everything else is still closed off, though. Now... Uh, because I've been constantly taking uh, focuses, you'll notice that my political power, I've only got two. You could, in theory, if you didn't care about, say, your Navy, because you figure, oh, the Navy's not going to win me the Civil War. Or same thing with the Air Force. Uh, I don't want the, I don't really care too much about that. I want to save up my political power to use it for other reasons so that I can have a ton when the Civil War starts. Okay, that's in theory correct, but first off, you're going to want to stand by the Republic. When the Second American Civil War begins... And the declarations of war happen. Look at that. You've got 402 political power. So you've got plenty to say, you know, wait, what the heck? Where did war economy go? Oh, <laughs> there you go. You automatically switch to war economy. But like if you manage to get your war support up, although it's very unlikely, you can get up to total mobilization. But you could also like pick up a bunch of these things, pick up some manufacturers. You've got tons of fighters and all sorts of things that you can choose from. So, in this situation, MacArthur did not take over the United States. If you want that to happen, just elect, do everything the same except elect Jack Reed or Huey Long, and then you're going to get an uh, an option to have Jack Reed uh, to have MacArthur take control. But since we didn't do that, uh, as we fast forward, you'll notice the Pacific states do not break off. They only do that when MacArthur uh, seizes power. All right, you're going to get a bunch of uh, decisions to make here. First off, Hawaii is going to break off, so if you wanted to go grab them, you, could, you wanted to go play as them, you could do that, but for right now, there they go. Uh, you're going to get the Chief of the Air Force event. This is going to be the first of several events in which you get to choose for free a lot of your military staff. So, for example, Chief of the Air Force, you, you can go for bombers, you can go for close air support, you can go for strategic bombing, it doesn't really matter, but you see, it fills up your military staff a staff and these are free events so when you get that quick political power i would not spend it down here in your military staff because you're going to get a lot of that stuff quickly i would probably recommend that you should instead go for the things like the tank designers or military theorists and etc etc your panama garrison is going to come home which is weird because it usually is home already you have your american mission in the philippines you can choose to get manpower or stability uh you know whatever it is that you want to do Canada will seize New England. If you want, you could go to war with them pretty quickly. Uh, 
usually if you can find a way to take Ottawa, Montreal, and Quebec pretty quickly, it's mainly Ottawa, I think you just need to take Ottawa, then uh, then Edward will offer you peace, saying, whoops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that to you colonies, I mean, uh, 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 the, you free, independent United States of America. Uh, or you can continue to press the war, and eventually Edward VIII will flee. And so you could actually crack the Entente in the first couple years of the uh, of the of the the game, because because Canada will then be without a faction, and that means everybody else, since the king was basically the only thing holding them together, you know, France here in Africa, the Dominion of India, Australasia, everybody is going to lose their faction. Uh, so. That could be really powerful, and that's something that's available to the CSA as well. Well, everybody could eventually attack Canada and do that, but what I mean is you could do that in the first couple years by using the American Civil War. So if you wanted to take Entente territory, it's very powerful to do. But for right now, let's just say better them than the Reds, just so you can see what that looks like. They will take New England. They might release it as independent. They usually do. Uh, and you're going to lose a little bit of stability because of that. Now you'll have quite a few divisions that spawn for you. As you can see, you got 141. Uh, the American Union State has got less than that. I know it says like they might potentially have 142, but they've got less than that. And if you have avoided the, um, <clears throat> if you avoided going with MacArthur, this is actually a pretty easy war to win because they're each isolated. You could maybe have them come down there here through Kentucky so that they're fighting each other and not just you. But you could pretty easily just isolate one or the other there's no reason you're going to have to evacuate washington or the west if you want to see a way to win the second american civil war uh that is harder than this because i also had the pacific states break off go check out my uh douglas macarthur divided states of america campaign i feel that i came up with a pretty decent strategy although I, maybe i didn't execute it perfectly uh, but i won and that's what matters so, um, you, you know, you're going to be at war for a little while, and as the war drags on, you're going to get different events. You're going to get things about terror and, uh, and, and things that are going to let you get a lot of volunteers. The Brazilians are going to help. You can choose your chiefs of the army and things like that. Uh, you know, a lot of people are going to want to help you out. Now, one thing I want to mention in terms of uh, the volunteers that are coming, they should all be landing in Washington. So that actually could become a problem because... You have to deploy any new soldiers that you make in an area that's continuously attached to your, like continentally attached to Washington. So, for example, let's say the CSA came down here into Kentucky and the American Union State came up here into the American Union State, and you wanted to defend, uh, deploy some soldiers here uh, into like the Midwest, that would be impossible. Uh, and by deploy, I mean I'm talking about these ones. Uh, because they wouldn't be attached continentally with Washington anymore. So if you wanted to do the abandoned Washington plan, keep in mind that the volunteers are going to spawn in Washington, and they tend to be better equipped than any other divisions in the war, or at least they're equal with them. For example, Brazil's in particular. Brazil sends the 10 very good soldiers for some reason. Uh, but that can, can really mess up your plan to ab abandon Washington just as a heads up okay so let's uh let's not fight the civil war here in the context of this video let's just see what happens afterwards now you will stop getting as a heads up you will stop getting the military staff events when the war is over so if you haven't gotten them all well that's just the way it is well canada uh, declared on panama that's really unusual yeah, Canada is going to be seizing a lot of your stuff. They'll seize Alaska and, and whatnot. There's New England. So, once the war is over, you're no longer going to have the fighting with America bonus. And instead, you're going to get a few new national spirits. First off, you're now recovering from the Civil War, which lowers your stability by 50%, your war support by 60%, and your recruitable population factor by 60%. So obviously this is really, really awful stuff, and it's usually going to cause, you know, it will be causing you to demobilize. So whatever your recruitable population factor was at the end of the war, a lot of people are going home, they're trying to, you know, fix their communities and stuff like that, they don't want to work for the government anymore. You're also going to lose war economy. This is very key here. And you can't just jump back to it even if you have the political power because you need the war support. Again, this is very key. Uh, so 
other national spirits you're going to now have to deal with is you have the economic devastation from the Civil War, which is lowering your production efficiency cap factory output and construction speed by 15% each. And you're going to have twin focuses, uh, overwhelming socialist resistance and overwhelming longest resistance. These are basically the guerrilla fighters and uh, the, you know, the South shall rise again type of people. Uh, and the people still try to bring the revolution. Both of them do the same thing. Minus 5% recruitable population. Uh, another 5% consumer good factories. And minus 10% war support, stability, and factory output. So all that stuff, double it. And so it's a pretty rough situation. So for example, if we went over to our consumer goods right now. Uh, right now we're down to only 73 factories compared to where we were earlier. And because of the civilian economy the, the and, and all the other stuff, we actually cannot build anything right now as you can see now of course the situation is not going to be exactly like this when you win the civil war because i just did the console annexing so it was over in a week uh which obviously you should not do i'm only doing that for the purposes of the guide so once that's done you're going to get access to lots of uh, uh new trees though you have the defend america which would have opened up when the civil war started this uh which i guess i should talk about now but this is basically just land doctrine stuff the national guard one in particular is pretty good though because it's going to give you an another another 10 percent recruitable population factor and more importantly it gives you 10 percent more attack and defense on your core territories which is very good during the civil war uh, but like it's stuff like land doctrine, war support and stability, military factories. This one's pretty good if you like motorized stuff. It lowers their production costs. But there's nothing too spectacular here. Um, but there's also nothing that is railroading you onto a specific land doctrine. So if you want to do mass assault, mobile warfare, whatever, all of it's available to you here. Eventually culminating in the fight for America, which gives you more war support and army experience. You do not now get those army rangers anymore. A GI Bill can be an important one, by the way, because this increases the popularity of whatever ruling party is in charge, as well as giving you a minus 5% research uh, speed. So that's probably the most powerful one here. Although a lot of the war support ones, such as new officers, can be very important when you're trying to get your economy on track, because you need 15%, 25%, 50%, and 80% respectively in order to increase your economy to these levels, in addition to the political power. Okay, so as I was saying, the Civil War is over. If you did the Civil War, these are never going to open, so just ignore them. And you'll get the victory in the Civil War. It's going to take 42 days. We just did the, uh, you know, we're doing the instant completion on that. Democracy Triumphs, God Save America, your party popularity is going to keep rising. You should just bypass Democracy Triumphs. <clears throat> you obviously cannot do the American Caesar path unless you did do the American Caesar then you're going to have uh, a couple of things open up for you here. First off is the beginning of reconstruction. So this is an interesting national spirit. Uh, if we go over here to construction, there's not really much repair going on. But if you had just fought the Civil War, there's going to be a lot more that has to be done. You probably have a ton of stuff queued up here from partisans and bombing and all sorts of things. Not to mention the terrorists. Because uh, these, these two resistance national spirits, in addition to all the bad things they already do, you're going to regularly be getting events where they are killing people, so you're going to lose recruitable population, where they're blowing up factories, destroying infrastructure, things like that. So they're just going to continuously be a pain, and it's never going to go away unless you deal with it, which, can, which is going to be a years-long process. But back to reconstruction. This new national spirit reconstruction will increase your factory repair speed by 50% and civilian construction speed by 10%. But your military factory construction speed is going to go down by 15%. So there's pros and cons to this. Uh, but once you've done that, you're going to be able to take some focuses here called rebuilding America. With the Civil War now at an end, we must heal the scars that have come from it. Uh, in this case, rebuilding New England is not available to us because we do not have New England. But basically, you're going to start coring everything again because you lost your cores. The federal government will have lost the cores based on who broke away. So, for example, here, Northern California is still considered a core state because the Pacific states did not break away. But if I went down here to Mississippi, it is a colony state and it is actually the American Union state that has it as a core. So you need to take these decisions, which cost 80 political power each in order to uh, get these different areas. So, for example, rebuilding the South is going to 
from essentially El Paso out to, uh, you know, through Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Kentucky, Alabama, it covers a lot of states, will all be cored. But what's also important is that they're going to give you more stability and war support, 3% of each of those for each of these. Because as you can see, because of all the horrible things, your stability is in the negatives and your war support is at zero right now. Uh, although now one thing you want to keep in mind though with the stability is at least initially, it's going to be weakly changing itself. Just a heads up. You also can uh, do the legislate freedoms if you want to get your stability up, uh, though this is going to cost you consumer good factories and daily political power costs. But hey, maybe you don't care about consumer goods because if you're not building anything anyway, what's another 5%, right? Okay, so, so that is how you're going to be able to recore things, which is going to help you get a lot of your recruitable population, recruitable population back. You've also got uh, the trial of the traitorous companies. Now, what this is going to do, if uh, we let a little time go by, we're going to see some of the other events that happen. But what the trial of the traitorous companies does is you can choose to execute the so-called traitorous companies or be lenient on them. I still think they need a hot fix this or something. Um, because right now it feels way, way too overpowered. Uh, you know what, let's just go, what's a short one? I don't know, let's like get the constitutional education to get the research slot. But it still feels really overpowered right now because if you exit, it, like if you punish the companies, it gives you political power and stability. And if you don't, nothing happens. Okay, here's an example of the sabotage that I was talking about. So you're losing stability and manpower because the longest have been sabotaging the railroads. And we still do not have a way to deal with all of that. Okay, and the syndicalists are doing the same. See, we lose stability and military factories have taken damage. Hmm, very strange. I'm not sure why the trial of the companies comes up. But basically, you're just going to have to choose if you want to punish people or not. And there only seem to be good reasons to punish them, and there's no reason to not do it. Now, if you want to role play, that's a different thing, but I think they need to fix that because it's way, way too overpowered. It really should be something that if you if you punish them, you get political power and stability, but you 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 lose the ability to use them, like Lockheed or something, right? Because because the United States has some very very good companies like Beechcraft here, for example. Look at that, 10% production cost on all fighters and 5% on that. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Over here, the trial of the aviation companies. Oh wait, no, they did fix it, wow. They went, <laughs> I went through a test run of this like yesterday. Okay, so you can allow the aviation companies to operate again and get stability, or you can say they're traitors and get political power. Well, shut me up, right? <laughs> that's good, that's good. Um, Although careful about that you don't go over the limit because it'll shoot you back down to 400. All right, anyway, now that I've been made a liar, no, I mean, that's a good change. That's a really good change because I remember bringing that up to Heracles. Uh, let's go back to Focus Autocomplete. So uh, you've got some other events here like Fate of the Union, but the one that you're really looking for uh, in terms of fixing the country is you need to come down here through Restore Legitimacy to destroy radicalism. Now, once you're destroying radicalism, you're going to get two decisions that pop here. Fight the socialist terrorists and fight the longest terrorists. These are two decisions which you're going to have to take about five times each. They will slowly reduce the penalties you take from the longest and socialist resistance, respectively. The other countries of the United States that break off will also have to deal with this when that time comes. Uh, and it's a years long process because when the 100 days happens, there's still like a little slight reset period of, uh, I want to say it's like less than a month before you can fight them again. And let me show you how important it is to get rid of those terrorists in case you're saying, well, I'm just going to deal with those factors while I work on other stuff. Well, let's say you took all of this branch that, uh, you know, gives you political stability, gives you a bunch of war support, gets your recruitable population back on track, and then you're totally recovered politically from the Civil War now. Like if we come over here, there's the economic devastation, but the other recovery is gone. So you've completely politically restored yourself, right? So surely now you can do the Monroe Doctrine wrong because you need 60% war support and you're still only at 48 because the terrorists are lowering it by 20%. So if you had dealt with the terrorists at the same time, 
you would have been at 68% right now, which is more than enough in order to take the Monroe Doctrine. So these are the kind of things that you need to be juggling. You know, uh, like, look, you still can't even go to war economy because you haven't been dealing with the terrorists. So you're going to be... You got a lot of things that give you political power, but you also need to spend a lot of political power. Now, over here, the, the beginning reconstruction, nothing too spectacular here. You can go through it on your own, you know, figure out, okay, when do I want the industry bonuses? Uh, and there are four industry bonuses in here by my count. Uh, but, like, it, it's nothing too spectacular, but the good news is that they're all 42 day focuses so you're gonna go through it much much faster than you used to be able to do the fair deal one in um in the previous version of the united states now the reason i was focused on completing all of these though is because i wanted to show you that rebuilding america's railroads is going to be impossible until you have new england so you cannot complete total reconstruction until you've taken new england back so you're gonna either have to ask canada for it or what sometimes tends to be more likely is that you'll have to fight them for it. Now, uh, here are some of the fate events that are going on, like malice or charity. Basically, do you, again, do you want stability or do you want a political power, just like with the trial of the companies? What do you want to do with the unions? Like, uh, basically, this is a political popularity sort of thing, although stability and political power is also involved. We're social liberals, so we'll just outlaw the syndicalist unions here. You also can choose the fate of the Electoral College, which is separate from the uh, 20th Amendment here. It's just an event that's going to pop up. And if you get rid of it, your popularity will go up, but your political power goes down. Uh, and I can see that they've uh, already, they must have hot fixed it, because I think before you had to pay like 250 political power or something to, uh, to do the social liberal thing. Uh, or you could say the Electoral College will safeguard the Republic and you get 100 political power. So, you know, again, there's that balance because, you know, when, when your popularity is up, you're getting more political power every day, but you might need those big chunks of it so you can do things like change your economy, right? Okay. Uh, anything, by the way, I'm not going into the fair deal and the democracy prevails because I've already made the avoiding the civil war video and I already have played, uh, it's a, it's a relatively short campaign where I avoided the civil war. So go check that out and check out St. Quentin. Uh, so once you've taken New England back, you're going to be able to do the reconstruction is over. So let's, uh, let's come down here really quickly just to get us over 60%. Where's the other one? I know there's another. Yeah, here it is. Okay. So now we're over 60%, uh, war support again. So you can take the Monroe Doctrine. Monroe Doctrine is going to give you a quick 100 political power. Uh, then you need to choose between if you're going to reaffirm the Monroe Doctrine or reform the Monroe Doctrine. As a heads up, if you do reaffirming the Monroe Doctrine, that's basically you saying, I'm going to stay in my hemisphere. I don't care about the wars in Europe. I don't care what Japan's doing in the Far East. I only want to secure the Western Hemisphere. I want everybody to be independently under me. Uh, and then you'll only go to war with countries that break into the Western Hemisphere or that have ideologies you do not agree with. So, for example, Mexico here is going to be one that you fight. I'm going to go into a little more detail about that in a second. But I'm bringing this up because if you did avoided the Civil War, world tension is probably going to be significantly lower. Uh, and if you reaffirm the Monroe Doctrine um, and, like, you, you know, you're a moderate you're like market liberal, social liberal, or something like that. So you're kind of in the middle politically. It could be very hard and, and, and actually it could become impossible often for you to manually justify on countries. So you might have to start using console commands, but this, the world tension will never be as high as it would have potentially been if the United States had joined in a faction. Yes, that's just the heads up. So since I've been talking about the reaffirming, let's do that. So as soon as you click the reaffirm, you will have created the faction in question, League of American States. And so, of course, you need to have more American states. So after the good neighbor policy, this is basically just going to make everybody in the West like you more. You can then take allies in the Americas. This oh, And this is the order you're going to kind of want to do it in, because then if you go to your decisions tab, you will get all of these potential invites that you could do. Almost every single person in um, in the Western Hemisphere is going to be able to be invited to the League, and those who are not, well, we'll talk about that in a second. But for example, let's uh, Brazil down here, they're social conservative, they're eligible. So let's say we wanted to invite them to the League, and they're going to immediately choose if they want to or not. So there you have it. 
and you've got the Caribbean countries, a lot of Central American countries, a lot of South American countries and things like that. But you might be noticing, wait a second, what about big old Mexico? Where Where's their focus? Well, for that, you need to come over here. Well, first, let's just take some of this other stuff. These are just bonuses that make people like you more. Uh, and you can come over here and get the Defending the Americas focus. Now, this is the one you can technically do first before you start to get allies if you went left instead of right. Defending the Americas focus is going to give you some of your rainbow plans. Uh, these seem to be the only two that initially get chosen. Uh, you could either go War Plan Purple, which is going to let you attack Chile, because Chile is syndicalist. You know, they are a they are like the syndicalist uh, stronghold in South America, so you're going to be wanting to fight that. Uh, then there is War Plan Green, in which you will go after Mexico, because here Mexico has gone uh, rad is radical socialist, and they usually will stay some sort of form of being on the left. So that these are two tiered war plans, so you have to first embargo them, which costs 60 political power, and then you can declare war, like so. As a heads up too, as far as expanding the league goes, if you try to invite somebody, it seems to be in my experience, now don't quote me on this part, this is just my personal experience, if somebody's at war, they will always say no, and uh, also, if you ask them once, you never get a chance to ask them again. So, that just again, just another heads up. Okay, so that's the two main parts of the uh, reforming the Monroe Doctrine, although there is this cool Pan-American Development Board where you can infrastructurally help out your allies. So right now Brazil's our only ally, so they're the only one we have a decision for. But you can spend 25 uh, political power to like build infrastructure for them, for example. It's going to take a little bit of time. It's not super powerful, but I think that's cool that that's in there. All right. And then besides that, just lots of bonuses, things to like decryption and encryption, research speed. People are gonna try to, um, you know, trade with you more, things like that. And it all leads to the Pax Americana, which gives flat political power to, I believe, ev 150 political power to everybody who is in your league when you take it. So that's kind of nice. Uh, but now we are going to take a look at the other branch of the Monroe Doctrine, coming over here. Come on. Come on now. Look at the little star up there. <laughs> Get the CSA screen off. Where where were the USA here? Okay. So if you had gone um Monroe Doctrine into reform the Monroe Doctrine. You're going to have, first off, you get the Diplomatic Corps stuff, more bonuses, more war support. It's like, I need the war support before so I can get the Doctrine, you know? <laughs> uh, but once you take the new Diplomatic Corps, or really before that, you're, you're going to take uh, Reform the Monroe Doctrine. You're going to get options in your Decision tab to join a faction. You can ally with Russia, although I've never personally been lucky enough to get something where it linked up. But you could just kind of keep an eye on what they're doing. So, like right here, they're paternal autocrats, so we're... Um, we're social liberal, it isn't gonna happen. But one day, one day I hope to do a campaign where I can get these two allied. It could be, it should be fun. Uh, anyway, uh, so in this case, we can join the Reichspakt. I imagine that we're not able to join the Entente because they hold American land right now. But usually the options will be, if you're playing as the United States, between joining Canada and the Entente, Germany, the Reichspakt, and Russia, if it's available there. Russia's usually gonna be grayed out because you have to have very specific things. So just highlight it and it'll show you what what would be needed to do uh, to ally with the Russians. So for example, um, they're doing mil they have to do military dictatorship and you have to do Caesar or you have to be moderate and they have to do Republic of Aristocats or D Democratic Republic. Those are the prerequisites. But it costs 80 uh, political power to join the faction. So right now we are hanging out with Germany, which is fine because we are social liberal and they are market liberal. Then you're going to get access to things like dollar diplomacy, which you couldn't if you haven't taken a faction before. And again, this is just making it that they want to trade with you more. Here's the really interesting thing. The rainbow colored war plans. So there are a few that you could have available to you. The ones that I have seen are orange, gold, brown, purple, green, and black. We already talked about purple and green, but orange is, which is available to us here, is how you would go to war with Japan. Uh, there is gold, which is what would have you go to war with uh, the Commune of France, uh, which is available to us here. 
There could be brown. Brown seems to be related to the Philippines. So if we go over here to the Philippines, they're not our puppet anymore, but they are social liberals. However, if they had gone syndicalist, like radical socialist, that sort of style, and they had joined with the Eastern Syndicalist Union being formed by the Baratia Commune, you would take War Plan Brown, and then now you're fighting in Southeast Asia. So that can get uh, pretty interesting. And then War Plan Black would be how you go to war with Germany. So as you're seeing, they've, they've moved a lot of things in the United States over to the uh, the decision tab and then this all eventually leads to the American century which gives you just tons and tons of bonuses oh oh whoops okay so there you pretty much have it oh hey British Reconstruction Authority wow the the Lawrence coup must have happened neat uh, so you know you're, you're gonna have you're gonna have something that uh, where Canada might say they refuse to give you New England. If that happens, you could just wait. I think the only penalty is that you take a, you get you have a minus 30 opinion of them. So don't feel like you have to rush into a war with them over New England, although that will uh, trigger it. And again, if you go to war with Canada and you can get Edward to flee, the entire Entente will collapse, which is of course very powerful. Uh, and it is a and it is a great way to help Germany if you're in their faction when it comes to uh, fighting them because then the Entente's not attacked. Well, actually, it's kind of a mixed bag. Anyway, th th that gets into some more complicated things. But wow, introductory guide that's 45 minutes. Am I right, guys? But thank you very much for joining me. I'm conquering history games. I hope that this has been helpful to you. Um, I know I didn't really go into the fair deal, but I explained why. Let me know in the comments if you do want me to explain these focuses. Of course, it would be a much shorter video. Uh, but I can do that. And remember, you can go to my Discord if you want to see what kind of leaders you can get uh, as the United States. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell so you're always notified whenever a new video goes up. Tell me if you're happy that Kaiser Right Guys are back. And remember that if you're a Patreon, if you donate at least $1, you're able to vote on what the next guide you're going to be is going to be. And if you get in a higher tier, you can actually get to jump the line as far as guide goes. So I will see you all around. I'm Conquering History Games. It's good to be back doing Kaiserite Guides. Have a wonderful day.